page 59, Rocky Top. This is the first piece in section 3 of the book. Here we're going to explore the key of G major. I explain it over on page 58 in a little bit. Let's just review real quick so you understand what we're exploring here. We have keys, and the word key means different things because you got piano keys, these things, they're called keys. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the key as in it is a set of sharps or flats and it has a particular harmony to it. It sounds different. Each, each key sounds a little different. We've been in C major all this time. We did the chords in C major. You, you got those chords, all right. Well, now we're in the key of G major. G major has one sharp in the key signature. It's always the same one. It never changes. It's always, and the sharps as they appear in a key signature are always in the same order. So you don't have to worry about which they are. The first sharp is always an F sharp, because you'll see it after the clef sign. It is in the treble clef, it's the upper line, which is if a note were on that line, it's an F. And that indicates, except this says all Fs, no matter where they are, are sharped. All right. For the bass clef, the sharp sign is on the F line between the dots. Remember the F clef and all that? If you don't, go back and go through this book again. Start review everything. But that's where it is, and it simply means all Fs are automatically F sharp. So you're going to have all white keys like you did in C major, except now it's G here, and the F is now going to be an F sharp. A sharp, if you'll remember, goes up a half step. So instead of an F, you play an F sharp here. And that's it. So the key of G has these notes. I have a scale video on G major. You need to go do that scale video, the beginner part, the one octave up and down. You do the accents and the wrist like I explained it in the video. Learn the scale for G major. They show it at the top of page 58, but I prefer not to use the music when I do scales. I want to focus on the hands and the keyboard. Then, in the middle of the page, of course, they cover the chords. Well, you remember that every step in a scale is numbered. Steps 1 through 7. So, in G major, here, the steps, of course, G is 1. It's always the name of the key is 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so the chord in the Roman numerals, the 1 chord, the 4 chord, the 5, 7, and all that, we just figure it out for G major. We already know it in C major. We've been doing it. For G major, the one chord is starts on step one. It's every other note. It's also known as a G chord. The four chord, one, two, three, four. In G major, it's a four chord. In C major, it's a one chord. It's a C chord. And then five is one more up, so they're here. Don't forget, remember the F sharps in the key signature. That's the five chord. And we usually use what's known as the five seven chord, so we add another note onto it. So we got, so we got the seven chord. So we got the one, four, and the five seven chords, the three primary chords for G major. Now, we can invert them, or turn them over, because we don't want to move the hand around so much. So the one chord is here, and for the four chord, the C chord, I'm simply going to put the G on the bottom, here. So I can go here to here. That's the four chord. And then the five seven chord, here. Again, we don't use all the notes unless it could, but we don't need to. I went the top and bottom, I can use either one of these. Now what I usually do is I use this one. Not me personally, but they do. Okay. And we simply turn it over. So I'm going to take the D and put it on top. So the F sharp's on the bottom, so it's here. So I got the one chord and the five seven chord. I don't move my hand around, but they're all right there. So I got the one, the four, five seven. Primary chords for G major. You need to know these. You should do it with both hands. Yeah. Well,
not so much for that. Now let's go find some stuff in G major, like Rocky Top over here. Now remember, when I start a new piece of music, I kind of look certain things over first. For instance, how long is it? Well, this is one page long. It, we got a grand staff, naturally. We, I would expect a grand staff. We got treble and bass clef. I'm going to check the clef signs because they're not always going to be treble and bass. We have been checking the time signature, and we still need to, but now we have to add the key signature. What key is it in? How many sharps or flats is this in? And I encourage you to think about the keys as scales. If this is in G major, can I do the G major scale? Because if I can do the G major scale, I know what notes are in the key already. I don't have to worry about remembering to sharp all the Fs. I just play in the G major scale. I play the notes in that scale and it just happens and it really works wonderfully. Especially when you get four or five or six of these sharps or flats in a key signature. If you know the scale, it just really works well. Now let's take it one hand at a time and again when I start this I connect everything first. And we do these staccatos and stuff later. So the right hand starts here here. And it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and the thumb comes down. Three and four. And then the hand comes down. We changed hand positions. At the end of the line, they want a five and then a four. Remember I've said this before, we use repeated notes a lot in piano to change hand positions. And that's what's happening at measure five. You remember the numbers above the staffs at the beginning of the line in the little boxes? Those are measure numbers. So I measure five is that one. Let's go down to the next line, measure nine. Now you have a rest here, so you got time you can come back up. You just lift up and it's three. One and two, three. Now, I'd like to introduce you to another fingering situation. I think I've already mentioned it. I'm going to mention it again. <laughs> For measure 9, I'm going to do a 3-1-3. Rather than using 3-3-3, three, 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 I'm going to 3-1-3. Three, three. I'm going to encourage you to do that too. To sort of get in the habit of that. It, I mean, there's other fingerings we can use. We'll get to those later. Right now, let's just focus on this one. 3-1-3. Three, 3-1-3. One, three. Three, one, three. And you think, well, why can't I do a 2-1-2 two, two here? And the answer is you can. But they're not as quick, so it's not as important. It's when we get the quick notes like that, it becomes more important to use different fingers. So well, if you want to do on measure 10, 2-1-2, two, two, that's up to you. I'm not going to, but you can. And then measure 11, they got a natural sign in front of the S. Remember, a natural sign is also an accidental, and it follows the same rules, so it's from that point on to the rest of the measure on that staff for that note. So we have Fs, and then measure 13, just lift up and 5, and then at the bottom, it's measure 15, again I'm going to use 1, 2, 1, and again at the end, 1, 2, 1. So, left hand, we get the chords in the left hand. You got the one chord of the G chord, just one beat, okay, and then the next measure, it's a four chord. See, it's so much easier when you can see these notes grouped together like this and you recognize what the chord is. You don't have to try and figure out each note. And I gotta play three notes here at the same time? You, no, you just play it. You just play it. It's one thing. It's just the, consists of three notes, okay, and the next measure, you got a five seven chord. This fun. Go down to measure nine. Third line, four chord, and then some one chords. Now just just move down one. It's an F natural. You go from here to here. Don't ask me what it is. I don't want to get into the music theory and identify every chord we use. Just play it. It's an F chord in case you're okay. And then the next measure during the rest, come back up. One, two. Four chord. And then the next measure, thumb again. 
going to put the hands together. And when I do this, remember, I was just trying to get the hands to work which notes are played together and which fingers are involved. So if I hesitate, that's fine. I'm not concerned. It's just two, three, four. Right there. And make sure you hold that half note down. So forth. Let's go down to the third line. Measure nine. You're here. One, two, three, four. One. One, two. You go through and put the hands together. I don't feel like I need to spoon feed this to you. You need to be able to read these notes. If you can't, please go back at the beginning and start the book again and learn to read the notes. Once you can do that, then you go back through and you'll spend anywhere from a day maybe to a week or more. Could be more. It's different for everybody. Getting rid of the hesitations. See, in the videos, I just say, okay, now go get rid of the hesitations. And like it's no big deal. Actually, that's one of the things that's going to take you the most time to do. To get rid of the hesitation. Play with a steady beat. So take as long as you got to take. There's no hurry, as far as I'm concerned. And getting it, just work on those spots where you're hesitating so you can get rid of it. So the beat is steady. Then we can add in the articulation. And that, that means the staccatos and things. I'm going to hinge at the wrist and staccato here. Short. And I'm on the key and I'm bouncing off each time. When it's slow enough, I do that. So you go through and add all the articulation. If they don't give you anything, you play it as connected as you can. You can't connect repeated notes, but you do the best you can. Once you have a handle on that, then we'll add the dynamics, the louds and softs. They apply to the melody. In this case, it's the right hand. MF is mezzo forte or medium loud. Whatever you think medium loud is, you decide. These chords need to be soft. Can you do that? Can you play that soft and that medium low? When you get down to the third line, measure nine, you go up to loud. That is for the right hand. You see the F they give you is closer to the bottom staff. So you think, okay, it must apply to the bottom staff. No. The words are in the way. The dynamic given applies to the melody, wherever it's at. Sometimes they'll give you multiple dynamics, so it helps you on, to, on, on those things. To me, it confuses me. I want one dynamic to tell me what the melody should be, and I'll make everything else adjust to support the melody. So, measure nine, I'm loud. These could come up a little bit to maybe moderately soft. soft and then at the last line first measure is loud the, again this is moderately, moderately soft it doesn't matter that they're playing the same notes it doesn't make the left hand melody they just happen to be the same notes and the left hand is still harmony because you can have an octave that's harmony it doesn't matter. Then you come down to moderately loud. Left hand soft, they come down to moderately soft. Left hand's very soft. And there's a writ, writ there, next last measure. R I T, retard on slow down a little bit. Now, once you can do all that, uh, we think about speeding it up. It says brightly. You can find recordings of this. This is a happy piece. So, be happy. Wow.
like to play this with you very slowly to double check all the notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I will do the staccatos and we will do the repeat. You see the repeat at the end of the second line, so you do the first two lines twice. So I'll give us four counts. Let's do it together. This is after you've learned it. No hesitations or anywhere. Now try it with me to check that you have the right notes and rhythms. One, two, ready, go. Repeat. Four. 